Greetings, beloved. Welcome back. I'm Chelsea. Freedom is calling you now. Beloved, happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. Today is Mother's Day, and I want to say happy Mother's Day to anyone who mothers in any capacity, whether it's naturally, spiritually, or you're just a mom to someone or some people. Happy Mother's Day to you. You don't necessarily have to have given birth in order to be a mother. I believe that being a mother is one of the highest callings that God has given women here on earth. I hope that if your mom is still alive, that you were taking the time today to love on her, to honor her, to celebrate her, to do all good things for your mother today. And if you have kids, I hope your kids are doing something special for you as a mom today. So from my heart to yours, happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers watching. Beloved, we've been on this journey of growing from glory to glory to glory with God. We've been on this journey of becoming the bride of Christ, securing our rights as a bride, building our intimacy as a bride, growing deeper and wider with the Lord. So in continuing on that journey, today I want to talk to you about building your altar. An altar, beloved, it's a place of exchange. We see altars that are built a lot in the New Testament. The majority of the scriptures that reference the word altar are in um, the Old Testament. I don't know if I just said Old Testament or New Testament, but the majority of the words that reference an altar in the Bible are in the Old Testament. And that is really a shadow and a type of what's to come in the New because the ultimate altar is Jesus Christ himself. An altar is a place of sacrifice. Thank goodness Jesus came and sacrificed for us. So we no longer have to build altars where we go and we give rams and goats and chickens or whatever the Lord asks for, cows, bulls, and burn them up and sacrifice them naturally on the altar. We don't have to do that anymore. Some people may think of the word altar and only see that high place where the pastor stands on Sunday mornings, where he places his pulpit. That's an altar, of course, but I'm talking about a spiritual altar today. Jesus himself, of course, was the altar, is the altar, because he was that place of exchange. He was that place of sacrifice. But because he did that for us, beloved, we also have the ability to have altars in our lives. And I say altars, plural. Um, all altars should be to God, but there could be different places where you have altars. The ultimate altar should be in your heart, which connects with your spirit man. But you may have like a natural altar in your home, in your closet, where you have communion and an exchange with God. Or it may be in your car. You may have one in your home and in your car. Just different places where you meet with God. That's what I'm talking about. But the altar, beloved, is built to meet with God, to commune with God, and to exchange with God. I'm going to delve into the Word of God and then I'll speak some more concerning what the Lord has laid on my heart for today. So I'm going to be reading from Genesis 28 starting at verse 10. Beloved, this is a story about when Jacob was running from his brother Esau. He deceived him out of his blessing. You know the story. He stole his birthright, but not really because his brother Esau sold it to him for a bowl of soup. But he did deceive his brother by pretending to be him so that he would receive his father's blessing. So here he is now on the run. I'm going to pick up here Genesis 28, starting at verse 10. The word of the Lord is this, beloved. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. So he took a stone, laid on it as a pillow. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to the heavens and angels of God ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All peoples on the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Let's read on further, beloved. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place and I was not aware of it. How many times has the Lord been present somewhere? 
present with us, and we were not aware that it's God or His angel that's there with us. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you for revelation, O oh God. Okay. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other place than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, and we know Bethel means the house of God, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear that I return safely to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, and all that you give me I will give you a tenth. So here we have, beloved, we've got Jacob who has an encounter with the Lord during the night while he's sleeping on this rock. I don't know how he could have a rock under his head as a pillow. But he has this encounter with the Lord. Through a dream or a night vision, the Lord appears to him and introduces himself. The Lord proclaims himself, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. And the Lord tells him what he's about to do in his life. I'm going to increase you. Your descendants are going to be like the dust. And I'm going to give you the land to the west, the north, the south, the east. And I'm going to bring you back to this place. Thank goodness he realizes that this is God. I'm going to call this house, or this place, the house of God. But I'm going to take this same pillar, pillow, and make it a pillar. This same pillow, which was a rock, I'm going to erect it as a pillar, as an altar to you. And then here comes the exchange. He says to God, Lord, if you will do this, if you will protect me, if you will feed me, give me food, if you will give me clothing to wear, if you'll do these things for me and, you know, be with me, then you will be my God. And I will give you a tenth of everything that you give me. So it's a place of knowing God. This is the first place that I can recall where God revealed himself to Jacob. So it's a place of God revealing himself. It's a place of Jacob knowing God. And then it's also a place of exchange. He's like, okay, Lord, now that I know you, let's have an exchange here. I'm going to build this altar to you. And if you will do this for me, if you'll provide for me, if you'll protect me, then you'll be my God. And I'm going to give you a tenth. I'm going to give back to you everything, a tenth of everything that you gave me. So again, we see that exchange. Beloved, the altar that I'm talking about today is not a physical altar. It's not a place where you're going to go and put rocks and pour oil on the rocks. But it's an altar that you're going to erect in your heart, in your spirit with God. It's that place of communing with God. It's that place of exchange with God. As I mentioned in some previous programs, when we're talking about delving into what God has for us and becoming the bride of Christ, there are some similarities to the natural in there. All throughout the scripture, God reveals himself to Israel, but he makes reference of Israel being the bride or his wife. He talks about them being unfaithful. He talks about them committing adultery. He talks about him bringing the bride or bringing his love back to him. So there's some similarities with this altar that I'm talking about today, beloved. The similarity is that of a husband and a wife. When husband and wife come together, that place of intimacy, that place of consummation is like creating an altar. It's that place where they come together to become one and they exchange different things there. They exchange um, their lives with one another. They exchange their bodies with one another. They come into oneness with each other. It's a place of intimacy where the husband will speak things to the wife, the wife will speak things back to the husband. 
It's a place of vulnerability. Both of them are vulnerable, the husband and the wife, before each other in a state that no one, hopefully no one, has seen them before. Because when you're naked before God, just coming as you are, just being truthful to Him with everything, it's a resemblance of being naked in the marital bed before your husband, before your wife, having that intimacy where nothing's off limits. And there's an exchange, there's pleasure that takes place there. When you're in that place of building an altar with God, there is a pleasure that comes over you. There is a pleasure that God brings to you in that secret place where you have erected your altar to God. God loves it. You love it. Both of you should be enjoying it together. Same thing with a husband and a wife. But also, beloved, it's a place where you come and you pour out your heart before God. There's nothing that's off limits. Nothing that you can't tell God. My experience has been that in the places of uh, where I've placed my altars, and again, all the altar is in my heart and in my spirit, but I do have certain places where I pray to God more intimately than anywhere else. My closet, my natural closet is one of those places where I go and I shut the door and I shut off the world and I'm just alone with God and I just begin to reveal my heart to him I begin to tell him things and of course he knows these things already but he wants to hear them from me he wants me to feel that I can trust him to tell him things but in return beloved it's a place of an exchange so in return the Lord will also reveal things back to me. Sometimes it's secrets. Sometimes it's what to do about a problem. And sometimes it's things that I'm not even aware of about my own self. At the altar, beloved, is where the Lord often reveals to me what the root is of some issues that I'm dealing with. He'll often reveal to me some things that I didn't even know were in me, some things I didn't even know needed to be dealt with. At the altar. That's also a place, beloved, or there's an exchange where I will go before the Lord and say, Lord, you know, I need this and I would like this. My Father, can you help me with this? It's a place of exchange. I'm going to Him with my concerns. I'm going to Him with my whole heart. Now, some people do utilize the altar as a place of making vows. They will go before the Lord and say, God, I promise you, if you do this for me, then I'll do this. I don't make a habit of doing that. I really don't do it at all. I don't feel like I need to bargain with God. God is my father, so I shouldn't have to bargain with him. Now, there are times, beloved, where the Lord will say to me, okay, I want you to sow this or give this person this. So there are those times, but I myself don't go and say, hey, Lord, I want you to give me this, so... Um, if you give me this, then I'll do this for you. I don't have that kind of relationship with God. He's my father, so I know he's going to give me whatever you know I need anyway, whatever I desire, as long as it lines up with the word of God. I know that's going to happen, so I don't go taking these oaths. And definitely, I'm not going to take an oath that I'm not sure I can uh, fulfill. There are those times, though, beloved, I don't want to deter you from sowing seed because there are definitely those times where you would go before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sowing seed for this. I'm believing for this. But there's a difference there. There's sowing seed and there's also bargaining with God. I don't bargain with God. He's my God. He's my father. I don't have to bargain with him. But that place, beloved, that place of exchange, you're exchanging intimacy. God once said to me, when you give me all that you've got, then I will give you all that I've got. It's in that place where I go to my altar to give God all that I've got. I give him my presence. I give him my time. I give him my worship. I give him my heart. And in return, God gives me his presence. He lets me see his heart. He loves on me. You know, also, beloved, in making the correlation between the altar, between 
the husband and wife, when they come together at that altar, that natural altar, that place of consummation, that's where seeds are planted to give birth to things. That's where conception takes place. In the secret place, at that altar, between the man and the woman. Nobody else knows about it. It's a private affair between the two of them. It's an enjoyable affair. But that's where the seed is planted and conception takes place to give birth, to give life to something beautiful. It's the same place, beloved, with your altar with God. It's in that place where conception takes place. That is where you should be planting your seeds. It's in that place where you should be allowing God to bring conception in you. That's where you go to start birthing out things. Of course, you've got to do your natural part of it. When a woman gets pregnant, of course, she has to eat right, take care of herself, make sure she has the right nutrition. But the conception happens in the secret place. The conception happens at the altar. The conception for us spiritually, beloved, happens at our altar with God, that place that we have erected to be ourselves, to be transparent before the Lord, to have consummation and communion with the Lord. That's where you go and you start birthing those things out. God, I'm desiring this. What do you think about it? And once you get that yes from God, beloved, then you don't have to keep going back to him and asking him. You got that yes from God, so now it's time to start birthing those things out in the spirit. You start standing on the word of God. You start calling those things that, that are not as though they are. And birth that thing at the altar right before God, right with God, because he's already given you the okay. And every time that you go back to God, you give him praise for that, but you continually birth that thing, you continually do what God tells you in that place. Sometimes it'll be okay, just put it out there once or twice. Sometimes God will give you another instruction that I want you back here until it takes place. It's already been conceived in the spiritual, but I want you to come back here until that thing takes place in the natural. But it's at that place in the altar. It's at that place before God. Mm, it's at that place of intimacy, beloved. If you don't already have an altar, beloved, I just want to encourage you to start building an altar before the Lord. Again, this does not necessarily have to be a physical uh, place. You don't have to pray in your closet. I just like to pray in there. I like to be able to shut the door to everything and shut all the noise out. You may live with people and it's not possible for you to have a closet to yourself or a room to yourself where you go and erect that spiritual altar with the Lord. It could be in your car, beloved. It could be down by the lake. The thing that is necessary is you and God and intimacy. That's what creates the altar. And that it's a regular place that you go to. It can't be a place where you're going to just once and calling it that you built an altar. So you have to continually go back to that place. It has to be your place where you know that you're safe with God, where you can tell Him everything, where you can make your requests known, where you have that exchange with Him, that exchange in the name of Jesus Christ, where you pour out and He pours back into you. He'll download to you what you need. I pray, Lord, that those who have ears to hear will hear. I'm going to pray right now, beloved. I want to invite you to pray the salvation prayer with me. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you just want to be refreshed, pray with me right now. Just go ahead and close your eyes, bow your head, and repeat after me. Father God in heaven, I know that you are the one true God. I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son, and that he died on the cross for me and was risen again on the third day. Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I know that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Father God, forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Jesus, come into my heart now. 
and be my Lord and Savior. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Lord, teach me how to erect an altar with you, for you, and before you. Teach me how to consummate our relationship. Teach me how to grow deeper and wider in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, beloved. I am going to wrap here for now. I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to you again. Go out and do something special for your mom today. If you are a mom yourself, go out and do something special for yourself. Your kids should and probably will be doing it also, but don't forget your own self. Go do something wonderful for yourself. Listen, beloved, I love you. God loves you more. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.